welcome to the guitar show. It's Ramon Goose here, and uh, it's really good to be back. Sorry, I've been a little bit busy recently, and uh, been actually in Tunisia, which is a really cool place. If you want to visit there, highly recommend going there. So, um, basically, we're going to be talking about Brian Jones today. I've made a few videos about Brian in the past, but this one is really just to commemorate uh, 50 years since his really unfortunate passing. Um, which kind of um, still today remains an enigma as much as you know sort of um, Brian Jones's own personality remains an enigma and maybe we can just dissect a little bit about him as a person and his playing. Um, talking about his playing which is really interesting a lot of people don't know is that he actually played in standard tuning, G tuning and D tuning so we're going to look at um, something in open G and it's a really simple riff um, it's sort of based on the um, Hal and Wolf song Little Red Rooster now I always sort of played it that's kind of the riff that I learned but Brian Jones had this really weird um, sort of cool don't want to say weird had this really cool sort of take on it Um, it was really innovative at the time. Uh, bearing in mind, in the 60s, we didn't have you know traditional videos and YouTube videos to tell us how to tune the guitar, and even so, I don't know how he found out these tunings. Um, there was a guy around England who not a lot of people know about, especially if you're American. Um, and excuse me if Americans, uh, you do know him because you're probably more um, up on British musicians and um, us Brits, especially the younger generation. But there was a guy called Davy Graham who was a massive influence on myself and I know he would influence a lot of people in the 60s um, and Simon, Paul Simon and Art Garfunkel, Art Garfunkel, Garfunkel um, on their album I think Bridge Over the Troubled Water they covered um, a song off an instrumental sort of finger picking song from Davy Graham called Angie. So he, he's kind of like, he's known, he's like a guitarist, guitarist and he came about in the early 60s, the late 50s, early 60s, bring, and he actually travelled to Morocco and brought some really cool sort of Arabic ideas to his playing Indian and Celtic and sort of came up with a whole Dagad tuning, which was kind of before he played it, nobody had sort of heard of it. So, you know, Brian Jones kind of came out of that kind of mould, as in he was travelling to uh, Morocco, you know, he made an album out in Morocco with some, you know, indigenous musicians out there. And, you know, so he was um, somebody that would kind of pick influences from everywhere and then kind of um, homogenize them and put them into, in a good way and put them into the Rolling Stones music. And let's just talk about him as a person um, going back. He, uh, for me, he, he was, you know, very sort of learned. He was very studied. When you hear him speak in those early interviews, black and white interviews with the Rolling Stones, you've got kind of Mick and Keith who are kind of almost um, kind of silly little boys almost you know they they just couldn't even string a sentence together whereas you've got Brian Jones who was this kind of eloquent English gentleman you know who really had something um, you know quite profound to say and you took him seriously you know really was kind of when Mick no, and no disrespect to Mick Jagger at all um, but when he spoke you just kind of saw an immature kid you know and so that was really you know, looking back at when I did some research on some videos on, on Rolling Stones, that was sort of, I instantly spotted that, you know. Um, another thing is he was really into jazz. Not only was he into blues, he was into all kinds of music, but especially jazz. He started on saxophone. And he was into players like kind of all that Adley and, you know, playing all that kind of repertoire and jazz standards. So, you know, he was, he was a real musician, you know. He wasn't just somebody that picked up the guitar and wanted to form a band, you know. He actually had a background in different instruments and that's why on the Rolling Stones records he could play the recorder you know he could play the sitar you know and we'll come to the sitar in a minute but you know he, he was somebody that you know wasn't afraid to try anything you know if you think about the recorder part on Ruby Tuesday you probably don't even think about it but go and listen now to Ruby Tuesday and listen to that recorder part and really that recorder part makes the song that's the magic of the song that gives it a kind of eerie mystical quality you know um, and even his riffs, even his basic blues riffs, kind of had this really kind of 
almost sort of eerie punk rock kind of quality to them. If you listen to, for example, it's such a simple riff, but um, the last time, that kind of um, really cool. You know, it's got this kind of eerie quality to it. Um, and that's genius for me. It's the, sim the genius is in the simplicity, but it's just got this special something to that guitar part which jumps out. You know, when you listen to it on the record, boom, it jumps out. Um, and it's a cool song anyway. Mick Jagger's got a really cool, you know, vocal part, a really cool um, vocal melody. And um, of course, all of you know the Verve and their sort of bittersweet symphony song, um, which a um, great producer called Youth. Recorded that, you know, and there's a whole kind of story, backstory to that, but uh, worth checking out. Another song I really loved when I grew up, my mum used to play loads of Rolling Stones records, and one song that I, well, as soon as I heard it, I thought, what's that? Is that a guitar? Is it a mandolin? You know, what is that? And it's playing this beautiful riff, and um, the actual riff was, um, like that were just absolutely beautiful and they were really sort of unexpected it's something that you know although he had he started as a blues sort of player he also had this great um you know facility for bringing in maybe music that he'd heard in the past or he'd heard through his parents or through school or whatever he just poured everything into the music of the Rolling Stones and that's what really made the Rolling Stones in my opinion really special when they um, first kicked off with that original lineup so what you have to remember is Brian Jones really chose the group. He started the group. You know, back in the day, he even asked a guy called Paul Jones, who I had the good fortune of playing with once. Paul Jones is basically the singer of Man for Man. He also ran a really amazing um, blues radio show, Radio Two, BBC, here in the UK. And uh, it's only sadly it's just finished. So he was really responsible for keeping the blues music alive in, in Britain, really via his sort of Radio 2 radio show and um, anyway, cut a long story short, Brian Jones asked Paul Jones to join the Rolling Stones and Paul Jones said um, no because he didn't think it would be financially viable um, and yeah it's true that uh, Mick Jagger and Keith Richards were set on forming a group but who's to say you know that had they not hooked up with Brian Jones they would have been famous you know known so Brian Jones you know he selected the names the name of the Rolling Stones. So the Rolling Stones name was Brian Jones' idea. The lineup was Brian Jones' idea. You know, the songs that they performed were Brian Jones' idea. Also, you know, um, the venues that they first performed at, all the gigs, he, Brian Jones was the guy that was phoning up to get the concerts when they first started off in London. And um, the pubs, you know, sort of around London, maybe some Slough or wherever, the towns that they were playing in. So, you know, he, he, he was so important in the inception of the band and you know, really, it's a real shame about his demise. You know, who's to say, um, you know, where he would be now had he lived? What would he have done after the Rolling Stones? Would he have, you know, rejoined the Rolling Stones at a later point? Would they have kept the door open for him? Or would he have gone on to do some other things? I know that he was um, thinking about doing some groups, um, sort of musical projects, you know, just before he died. You know, he was hooking up with other musicians. So, you know, there were other plans. And I think, you know, maybe he was he'd gone through a bit of a dark period with the sort of alcohol and drugs which a lot of musicians around that time did you know and from in my opinion i think he would have come through it i think he would have sobered up and he would have um and maybe he was already going that way you know i don't know if you guys have watched a few of the documentaries but you know maybe he was you know going to be sort of changing his ways and getting back to music you know, um, I think also with Keith Richards, um, you've got to remember, he, you know, Keith Richards is an, is an amazing guitar player. You know, he's really the heart and soul now of the Rolling Stones and his riffs are magic, you know. So, you know, I'm not sure, you know, a lot of people say, oh, he copied Brian Jones on the slide at the open tunings. And there's a bit of a debate about that, but, um, you know, my, my take on it is that he was really in awe of Brian Jones, you know, um, he was, he sort of came as a package deal with um, Mick Jagger and he was a bit, in, maybe a bit um, in awe and I know that Brian Jones actually gave Keith Richards guitar lessons, you know, and taught him about blues and the different types, because Brian Jones was a real connoisseur, you know, he could play, like I said in the beginning, he could play D tuning, he could play um, G tuning, which I showed you, so if you go to the uh, D tuning, actually this song, I think the original was in E, 
so there's no expectations. And it's a really, really simple part. Um, apparently, this is a, um, a time when Brian Jones, you know, wasn't, you know, um, Copus Mundus, you know, he wasn't really on the ball. But he still just played some beautiful figures here, something like... Um, simple but very very beautiful everything you know whenever he contributed something to a song it was always like the, the right thing it sounded cool it was a hook jumped out you know that, that for me is what really Brian Jones was all about also I think he was somebody like I said he was a pioneer he was somebody that was bringing influences from all around the world and I know that um, I think there was a you can listen to John Lennon talking about Brian Jones in an interview saying he was just a bit of um, you know he was on drugs and he went sort of same way as everybody else that died around that period. Um, but you know George Harrison had a totally different take from what I've read. George Harrison said he used to literally climb over his wall um, to George Harrison's house and um, you know at like four, four or five in the morning after a party or whatever and then the two would kind of sit up and play music and chat and, and George Harrison just said he was a really really nice soul, he was a really beautiful person. You know, and I think George Harrison, you know, he's a very spiritual, George Harrison was a very spiritual person, and he, he definitely, you know, could sense that in somebody, I think, whereas, you know, John Lennon was more of a sort of rock and roll, sort of hardy sort of guy, you know, who was going to take no prisoners, so, and I, I've got that impression about Brian Jones as well, I think, you know, he was misunderstood, and maybe the Rolling Stones, in my personal opinion, should have, you know, made an allowance for him, you know, he was the guy that formed the band, he was, he was the guy that they owed everything to Brian Jones and they should have allowed him, you know, that, that bit of a space, bit of time to get his head together, you know, and um, I'm sure he would have come back into the group and done amazing things. But, you know, that's a debate that we can we can debate forever, but um, that's nothing to take away from, you know, Mick Taylor, what he did with the Rolling Stones or, or um, Ronnie Wood, and even Keith Richards, you know, I'm a fan of Keith Richards, I think he's a great player. Um, he's, you know, I've, I'm influenced definitely by the Keith Richards right hand thing. You know, for me, it's all about the right hand, and I love players. That, you know, so you know, I mean, you know, here's here's to Brian Jones. He's been dead for 50 years, but for me, he's somebody that you know I listen to him on a constant basis, and every time I I hear a bit of his music, you know, my ears always sort of perk up, and I just think, wow, that is amazing. So here's to Brian Jones and uh, rest in peace and thanks for watching, God bless.